How you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out Shallow by Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper. What an incredible tune. I should have done it ages ago, but I found the vocal really difficult, but I think I found a reasonable solution for that one. So uh, it's got really lovely strumming parts and fingerstyle parts, so let's just get to a close-up and check out how to play it. we go so let's slow this bad boy down so we're starting off with an e minor chord first and second fingers in the second fret of the fourth and fifth strings you're probably familiar with that one we're also going to pop little finger down on the third fret of the second string now we don't actually play these two notes with the first and second fingers but i'd recommend you put them down anyway in case you accidentally brush the strings which is very likely in this kind of riff so that's uh the fretting hand now as far as the other hand goes thumb is going to play the bass note, then first finger is going to play the third string, second finger will play the second string, and then back to the third string. So it's the first part. Sixth string, third string, second string, third string again. Then the fingers split, which is also a nice reason to have them there. So the first finger is going to go down onto the thicker string, second finger is going to go down onto the third string. And then we, thumb is going to play that the second fret of the thicker string. First and second fingers are going to play together strings two and three. One and two and three and four and. 
And then on the end of four, third finger is going to go down on the third fret of the thicker string. Little finger just stays where it is, and we're going to play again now all together. The bass note, third string, and the second string all at the same time. So that first bar, one and two and three and four and one, two, three. And that bar again, one and two and three. Okay, you could change the fingering a little bit if you wanted to. If you're struggling with using your little finger there, I suppose you could go like. Okay, so you could get away with using the stronger fingers, first, second, and third. I find that a lot easier for me, but you know, if you're struggling with that, I feel like the third finger is a bit awkward there, but you could definitely do that if you're struggling with little finger. Now the next bar. Starts with a C chord, and we play the fifth string. Thumb will play the fifth string there. First finger will play the third string. Second finger plays the second string again twice, and we put little finger down on the third fret of the second string. Then we play third string bass again. Fifth string, third string, second string, little finger down, second string again. Play the third, leave it down, play the third string, the bass string, and then second finger is going to move over and play the thinner string, and first finger will then play the second string. You could use your third finger on second uh, finger to pluck those thinnest two strings if you want, but I feel like that's more kind of in tune with what he might be doing. Yeah. You could use third finger there. It, it ruins my anchor. I like to use my little finger there as an anchor, hold my hand in place where I can. And if I get into using the third finger, it kind of spoils that. But you could definitely do that if that's preferred. Then we've got that. This we're going back to the G chord, and we're going to play the thumb, the second and third strings together again. Then we move to a D chord. We're playing just the the fourth string. The thumb, second and third strings with the first and second fingers. Okay, so now again, I'm using just first and second fingers. Now I know it could make would seem to make more sense to use third finger and then second finger, first finger. And if you want to do that, if that's what feels better for you, it's not going to make much difference. I prefer using second finger for the little hammer-on flick off, which I'll talk about in a second, and then first finger for those two strings. Okay, now this little twiddle is one of the things that's going to be difficult. Second finger going from open, hammer on the second fret, and then off. So just where it would normally go for a D. If you can't do it, just leave it out and just go. Or Leave it out completely. Just do, do with it what you can. Don't stress about trying to get a little tangle like that. You know, it is an embellishment. Okay? So that second bar. Okay? This is the third bar. Sorry, the second part of the phrase. So let's just go through that whole thing now. So one. happening on the and so it's 16th note tri triplets if you want the technical stuff but it's if you start on the and after three four and that's how it's going three and a four and one you might find it helpful just to 
to repeat that part. Well, it's a little bit lax on the record. The, the record is kind of fluffy. It's not technically right. Sometimes the notes don't quite ring out true. And that's kind of the beauty of it in, in, in a lot of ways. It's very difficult to emulate that exactly, to half mute notes and let them be a bit squidgy. But uh, almost certainly for the recording, that's what they're after. It doesn't sound like clean session playing. It's kind of slightly sloppy in a very beautiful and organic way. So definitely don't be too hard on yourself if it's not like mint perfect. You know, that's, that might actually add something to the tune if it's slightly on the, on the rough side. So let's go back through that a couple more times, nice and slow. Make sure you've got that down. Remember that the first bar is often used in between as well as like a little interlude. Uh, you know, before the vocals come in, it just goes that first couple of bars on its own anyway. One and two and three and four and one, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. That's that. Then when the vocals come in, again, tell me something, girl. Are you happy in this modern world? Or do you need more? Is there something else you're searching? amazing and all the good times I find myself longing for change and all the bad times I feel myself okay then we're obviously we're into the Ga uh, Lady Gaga comes in and tears it up man can that girl sing or what man yeah, absolutely incredible uh, blows me out every I wasn't a big fan of Lady Gaga before this song it's ridiculous that she she's actually she's the real deal like a stellar musician and for some reason I just didn't get it until I got you know heard this song watched the movie and was like oh no this girl's good and then looked backwards and was like oh man why was I ignoring this stuff felt so silly anyway then we're into the part uh uh where the where the chords start and I would recommend picking up a pick Sorry, I put one behind me. So uh, you could strum with your hands for certain, but for me, again, the character of this song is it, it does build up quite a lot there. Once the once the chords start, you want to be able to give it some. So using the, the fingers didn't kind of work for me. So, you know, I'd leave a pick on my lap and pick it up or leave it in your teeth or tucked into the pick guard or whatever it is that works for you. But you probably want to get a pick for the next section. So the first chord is an A minor here. So I'm off the deep end. Now the next chord is a D. It's an F-sharp bass, right? I can hear the F-sharp bass very clearly there. Now, if you're struggling to put an F-sharp bass there with the thumb, just play a regular D, or you can re-finger D with an F-sharp bass like that, but I feel, always feel that's a little bit over the top, a bit awkward to do for most people. So I'll be recommending A minor, D and watch as I dive in. Then G, probably want to use the version with the third and fourth fingers on the thinnest two strings. G, to D with an F sharp bass again to E minor. Now this time leaving my third finger down, so it's, technically it's an E minor seven. You could play regular E minor if you're finding it difficult. All of these things you can simplify. If you can't do the full version, doesn't matter. Simplify it to whatever level it is that you feel comfortable with. Much better to feel comfy with it and then have things that you can explore later on and be actually able to play the tune. I always feel anyway. Uh, a minor again. Where well, they can't hurt us They're far from the shallow now Now in the next section uh, In the shallow Again, you don't have to do it But there's a really nice movement in the bass to have this In the shallow A minor with a G bass Still just A minor But you just pop little finger down third fret the thickest string to the D with an F sharp bass G to D with an F sharp bass to E minor A minor in the shadows you're far from the shadows now 
At the end of that chorus there, there's a little bit of picking out of notes on the E minor going into the bridge. So you just hang around on that E minor. Uh, it sounds a bit finger styly on the record, but you can definitely just pick out some notes with, uh, with your pick. That'll be fine. Doesn't really matter. You're just building up into that massive bridge there. Uh, but before we get into the bridge, I just want to talk a little bit about the strumming there uh, for that chorus. So when you first hit it, you probably just want to do single strum. So I'm at the deep end, watch as I dive in. I never hit the ground. Dash to the surface, where you can hurt us. So far from the shadow now. So just having those single strums is a really effective tool. It, it, it brings out the accents, allows the, the vocal to really get featured there. You don't want to be drowning it in guitar stuff. But as soon as you're ready... Putting that little accent on beat one, the end after one and two, and after two and beat four can work really well. Uh, there'd be lots of different approaches. You probably want to use all down strumming though, because the, the all down strumming has a lot more kind of uh, forward motion. I always feel right rather than if I, if I went In the shadow, shadow, compared to. just got more movement and then explore where you put the accent so like I said the, the beat one the end after two and four works really well uh, but you could experiment with that so yeah see how you feel again that's a really nice thing to be doing to play along with the original recording mute the strings and see what you feel how does the strumming feel try and lock into the groove see kind of what feels uh, right to you but without the chords because the chords can be really distractive when you're trying to focus on the rhythm now the bridge uh, involves a bar chord B minor so if you're not familiar with B minor it's one of the easier bar chords so it's probably not beyond the reach of a lot of beginners but it is a bar chord uh, first finger is going to be playing the second fret the thinnest string and the fifth string it doesn't have to bar all the strings because these other fingers are going down but the tip of the first finger should mute the thickest string as well that's fairly important part of the B minor. It is a nice way to do it if you're not familiar with B minor is to play a regular A minor, swap the fingers around so it's the same shape but the first finger is off, move it up two frets and then see if you can get that first finger down here. Like I said you only really need to cover this string and that one because the strings two, three and four are covered by the fingers. So it's not like a bar where you've got to try and hold every string down. And like I said mute the thicker string. So then you've got B minor, A, E minor, B minor, D, A, chorus, back to A minor. Very interesting to go there to the, the major sound in the bridge and then it drop from the major to the minor chord on the same root note. Unusual effect. It works fantastic in this song. It really seems to lift it big time. So... Uh, be aware of that, that it's the change from a major to a minor tonality there that comes in with the vocal and it lifts. Again, for those outro choruses, you probably want to be giving it a bit more. You could do uh, big, what I call splangs, like the single hits. After that bridge, you've got all of this build up the bit. probably smacked it a bit too hard there probably peaked out everything on my computer as well made it all a bit distorted but anyway you get the idea so having a bit of a bit of oomph there coming back in is probably a good thing because that that bridge is really building 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 a boom you know so try and feel that i'm, I'm talking a lot about dynamics here because that stuff is you know that's one of the things that makes this tune so powerful is these the, the difference if you think about the start of that tune at the end it's not like one of those disco songs where it's the same all of the way through it's like dynamically huge variation between that such a quiet intro and that bridge where it's just really big and building and kind of ominous a big powerful thing you know it's a yeah an incredible just an incredible tune on on about every different level uh and so yeah after that you just plan that that chorus again uh 
if you're playing it with someone else, you can have a go at trying to uh, pick up the Bradley uh, Cooper harmony part, which I'm find it a little bit tricky. I always find it hard to sing lower harmonies with a girl saying, I don't know why. Uh, but that, yeah, that can be a fun thing if you're playing it with somebody else. Uh, do experiment with the keys as well. Uh, if I was going to have to sing this whole song, I'd probably be putting a capo on a little bit, singing it down, and then putting a capo on rather than trying to sing it in the original key. Just it feels a little bit sketchy for my vocal range. So don't be, afraid, especially if you're a guy singer doing it, don't be afraid to experiment with it. And uh, for sure, uh, like the Gaga thing, I mean, she can nail those high notes. I imagine many singers will struggle with that a little bit. Uh, to bring the key, the, the, the song down is a little bit more difficult, actually. You'd have to detune your guitar. You could put, try putting a cap on the ninth fret, but it might sound a little bit odd. So, uh, no, you might have to just sing it down an octave. Anyways, uh, I'm rambling a little bit now. I don't think there's anything else to talk about in this tune except just have a great time. It's an incredible tune. Really appreciate your support. If you're over on YouTube, hitting that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the bell if you want to watch me transcribe songs live. I'll do a little bit of that as well. Uh, remember, there's tons and tons of lessons all completely free over on the website if you're struggling with your chords or rhythm or making chord changes. You want to learn about harmony theory. You want to learn any of that stuff. It's all over there. Nearly all of the site is free. Go and check it out. If you haven't been over in a while, you've got everything to gain and not very much to lose at all, if anything. So, justinguitar.com. Go and check it out. I'll see you plenty more lessons very soon. You take care and have an awesome day. Bye.